Uh, I saw the actual implementation of Plasma. So seeing uh, developers and Joseph Poon explain it last night and then somebody actually build it shows you that scaling isn't just a theoretical thing, it's conceptually possible. Um, over the weekend, I really enjoyed Joseph Poon's Plasma talk. Uh, jo Plasma is a little bit hard to understand sometimes, even for myself, and having him there being able to answer, like ask him questions and sort of respond to questions from the audience, um, I think completely changed the way that this event um, unfolded so that it wasn't just the same as sort of reading a white paper or having someone else read it. You really have people explaining the technology and the ideas from, from their very core. Ethereum basically disintermediating various middlemen that today charge lots of fees. Um, so you can see that in things like prediction markets. Basically the idea is with Ethereum you can open up financial access. So Bitcoin gave us decentralized money um, but with Ethereum, we have a decentralized computer that we can actually run financial markets on, uh, which is pretty powerful, I think. If you imagine the internet infrastructure was smart and you could just you know, tell it to do stuff and it would just do it for you without having to rely on these SaaS services, um, these, these other types of like taxing, tax taking services, uh, I think that's what Ethereum the, the ecosystem is it's kind of building towards, and I'm really excited about that. So, so some of the cool projects we, we've seen, um, I, I really like infrastructure style stuff. So you know, there's lots of interesting apps. I think hackathons are a great place to start to like, think through what it takes to actually build an app on Ethereum. Um, but on the infrastructure level, I really like when people build developer tools that make it easy to debug your Ethereum application or to actually build a new one. So one I really liked was called Rufflet, which is uh, like a contract execution analysis platform that kind of shows you when and where different functions were called in a smart contract, which until now has been like kind of difficult to get a handle upon. So I think that's going to be a really powerful tool for people to use that you know, I would start using tomorrow. Some, some of my favorites were um, what was called Happy ENS. And so ENS is uh, uh, a protocol to basically let people register domains, like .eth domains, that can point to you know, Ethereum addresses or IP, IPFS uh, addresses. Um, and so someone basically built like a DNS proxy server where you could set your DNS to this server and then in Chrome or in any browser you're using, it would automatically resolve your DNS domain um, and let you just go to like jessepollock.eth and it would show a web page of, of whatever that person chose. And so uh, I just thought it was a really simple, clean way of making ENS, this like base layer technology, accessible to anyone. And I'm super excited for people to keep like working on that kind of stuff outside of the hackathon. There was one that was a MetaMask for Brave extension. I've been hearing a little bit whispers about this, uh, or for them wanting to do it for a little while. And so seeing it implemented and them saying, you know, this is going to be on the, the store tomorrow. You can download this extension and start using it on mainnet was really great. Uh, the, the fact that these projects that are coming out of this hackathon are not only just proof of concepts or uh, things that could be cool, but they're actually uh, the technologies there that you can just ship the code and people can start using it immediately. Another great one that followed that was the Happy ENS. That's like one I've been wanting for a really long time. I actually talked to somebody about a DNS server that we need for .eth TLDs. And uh, they built it over the weekend with scaling and, and um, sort of all the different pieces you need to make it actually work. Um, so that now everybody who has a .eth name can resolve it to a website, which I think is sort of the first step in the decentralization of, um, of the internet. Uh, there was a project that was making um, some stubs and mocks for testing code, uh, which is definitely needed in smart contract development because it's important to make sure that your code is actually secure. I mean, we work on a, we're working on a hardware wallet, so that's really our most exciting, like, uh, cutting edge thing that we're excited about, I guess. Personally, I want to see some prediction markets that are built with real-time uh, video built into them. Um, so, in, for example, you can, you can think of like you're watching a, you know, maybe a football game or maybe an eSports game and you can make real-time predictions as the game is progressing. What I expect to see is um, like really novel use cases of smart contracts that enable new methods of computing that just aren't possible with like uh, if the developer was using like JavaScript or like a uh, regular client, uh, like a regular uh, client server model. Um, and so I expect to see like really interesting cases where um, things that can't really be encapsulated in a web application can be encapsulated in a Solidity smart contract and deployed to a testnet and for people to start building like really interesting like short little demos through these hackathons that can evolve into decentralized apps. 
think for people who are getting into the space and don't really know where to start or how to begin, begin the process, building these really small sort of subcomponents and making them really good, really um, sort of modular so that they can interact with each other as much as, much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of there's really not enough developers in the Ethereum space building these really small components, and there's so much to be built. And so I'd urge developers who want to get into the space or who are sort of looking at it to not necessarily focus on the biggest problem that they can think of, but actually just start working with Ethereum development and solve the problems they run into. Uh, that is a way that I've, you know, I'd work on a bounties project and uh, uh, like outsourcing code and uh, open, like incentivizing open source contributions is a main is a main tack like problem I had to tackle, and that's sort of how I approach that problem. And it's sort of the same idea for anybody else who needs to build, um, you know, proof of GitHub for example is a great one. These really small modules that everybody can use, make them available to the, the community, so that the apps that are building on Ethereum can all sort of start to take advantage of each other um, better. Find some uh, specific practical challenge, right? Because there are so many things you, you can do in this space. And sometimes people, they try to go for some really high level abstract stuff. And for me, it's right now, uh, there's a million of specific little interesting challenges in every area of uh, blockchain and crypto, right? Let's take Ethereum name service, right? And uh, just in that space alone, you can find so many different applications of that, right? Like right now, we're talking about those ICOs and uh, a few of them, they've been hacked in a totally stupid way when somebody replaced their receiving address on the website, right? What the hell is that? So I think that even just uh, changing the way we receive money from those stupid, you know, strings of addresses to actual names of people using their ENS, I mean, that's one little thing, but it can make a big impact. And there are so many of those, right? So uh, I would say for any developer is... Uh, Focus on the area they're already familiar with and passionate about, and then uh, try to kind of see how that connects with blockchain and crypto and build something practical and uh, put it out there. And uh, you can find other people who will uh, want to collaborate with you and work with you on this. Well, it's important to have a strong foundational knowledge of how the blockchain really works so that when you're coming up with a project, you can evaluate its feasibility, whether it's really tractable. So there are a lot of things that are technically possible with blockchains. Uh, but may not really be tractable for the next few years or so. Uh, so it's, it's important to understand exactly how the, the incentivization behind it works, how applications can actually store data on the blockchain, uh, how transfers of value will work there. And only then I think it's really possible to build an app that will actually work and integrate well. Uh, our approach to getting engagement by the hackers is, is essentially just to create really amazing and accessible developer tools and to have thorough documentation for our JavaScript library um, and just to chat with everyone about what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and yeah, there's been a lot of interest. Trying to build, uh, build something simple, think of a, a simple smart contract or a simple idea and, 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 and just try to, to implement that. I think that's always uh, the best way to, to learn and, and, and it's better than just trying to read, uh, read, 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 and just build. <laughs> so far, like the foundation doesn't do any development of projects itself, though it does try to do anything that it can to kind of support developers as a, as a whole. So I mean, if we can build tools that make life easier for developers, then that's something that we very often do. If we can you know, write documentation to make things easier, then we do that. Like, we do work. You know, Organize things like conferences, sometimes participate at other events. Uh, just basically, just various different kinds of education. Yeah, the like the the biggest. I mean, some of the biggest prongs, I guess, of the space are like the scalability aspect, um, the cryptography aspect, and the kind of the state machine aspect. So we're interested in, in new kinds of virtual machines and state machine designs and programming languages for them. So anyone that has expertise in that space, we're, we'd be really welcoming of. Um, definitely on the cryptography side, there's lots of really cool cryptography coming down the pipeline with ZK Snarks and ZK Starks and ring signatures and, and all this kind of fancy pairing crypto and, and now the quantum proof crypto everyone's talking about. So anyone involved in cryptography, we'd love to have on board. Um, and then on, on the economic front as well, there's a lot of really interesting like mechanism design and, and economic planning to do in rolling out some of these public systems. And so we're really excited about getting more minds uh, involved that can think in a kind of economic way.